Thank you very much, Chair, Bishop. Thank you for the invitation to um, address the Synod. Um, let me just, first of all, just give a li tiny little bit of background. Um, most of my time as an academic, which I hate to say now is about 30 years, um, has been spent studying social and political attitudes, particularly through um, two instruments. One, the British Social Attitude Survey, which was started in 1983 by the late Professor Sir Roger Jowell. Um, who, which, and his aim at that stage was very much that there was that, that very little then in the way of continuous survey work measuring public opinion um, over time. Um, that project's now kept going for 30 years, and that, that therefore means we have, a, uh, on some questions, including on today's subject, 30 years' worth of data that we can look at to understand how things have changed. And then secondly, more recently, in 1999, with the advent of the Scottish Parliament, we started, as it were, a cousin of, of British social attitudes, which is Scottish social attitudes, um, which again looks at, tries to understand change over time with respect to social and political attitudes. Um, now, the thing to understand about this, of course, is that what we are therefore trying to do, and this is quite crucial, is not necessarily to tell you what we think the world should look, should look like, we are trying to understand as, from an academic perspective, how the world is, for good or ill, and why that appears to be the case. So the first thing I want you to understand is that whatever I say this morning, you should not read into what I say any personal views that I may or may not have on this subject. I'm simply trying to tell you my understanding of the world as it is, and why the world is now as it is, and why the world has changed. Um, I'm going to look primarily at British and Scottish social as, as evidence, but I'm also going to use other commercial surveys. And I think probably, touch wood, I've more or less got every significant reading of public opinion uh, on this subject, uh, certainly in recent years when there's been the, uh, the issue of particularly uh, same-sex marriage has been the subject of legislative activity. Okay, now the... Um, can I have the next slide, please? Sorry, I'm not, I'm not pointing this correctly, obviously. Um, the first thing you need to, uh, I think, what I want you to understand, this is coming from British social attitudes, and this is not particularly to do with same-sex same sex marriage. This is attitudes towards same-sex relationships in general. Uh, the blue line is the proportion of people, and this is, from, this is from the UK as a whole. The blue line shows the proportion of people who, basically, over the last 30 years, have said that same-sex relationships are either always or mostly wrong. And the red line is the proportion of people who say they are rarely or not at all wrong. Um, and the same question has been asked throughout this 30-year period. And as you will see, there has been a remarkable, if not indeed dramatic change in public opinion in attitudes towards same-sex relationships. Back in 1983, when we first surveyed this work, 62%, essentially virtually two-thirds of the GBY population said that sexual relationships between two persons of the same sex were always or mostly wrong. Only 21% of people, around one in five of people in the UK, said that basically there was nothing wrong with this at all. The proportion of people who were disapproving of same-sex relationships then indeed gradually increases. Why? Well, because this is the era where AIDS was, became uh, first discovered and where there was a widespread perception that AIDS was particularly common in the male uh, homosexual community um, and was to some degree, the, it spread was the resort in particular of male uh, same-sex activity. But then thereafter, from basically 1987 onwards, public opinion then moved in the direction which it now is such that basically just before the introduction of civil partnerships in 2005, we moved to a situation where hitherto more people had essentially been disapproving of same-sex relationships than essentially saying, you know, there, there wasn't any problem. We kind of reached the point where approval as opposed to disapproval became the more common reaction just before the introduction of civil partnerships. And in a sense, you can see how the introduction of civil partnerships was in a sense a response to what was already a substantial change. And that change has simply continued thereafter. So on our most recent reading, only 28% of people in the UK as a whole now uh, say that same-sex relationships are always are mostly wrong. And now over half of people, well over half of people say 
um, they are not wrong at all. Now, equally, one can also say, however, by the way, it is still only just over half of people who say it's not, uh, uh, it is not wrong at all. And insofar as we are on a journey, we are arguably on a journey which is not yet finished. Now, to give you some idea, I can only really think of one other change of social attitudes during the course of the last 30 years as measured by British social attitudes, which has been more dramatic than this. And that is our attitude towards the banks. Um, back in the 1980s, 90% of us trusted banks. Now it's down to about 10, and the statisticians amongst you will realise that basically nothing could fall any further than that. Um, but we, it, it is, frankly, a very, very dramatic change. Now, we don't have the same long time series for Scotland, but on numerous occasions in this talk, I'm going to show you the essentiatus in Scotland are the same as they are across the UK as a whole. And insofar as we do have data, we have data essentially for the first uh, decade of the 21st century since SSA has been going. And as you can see, essentially, the same trend, or at least we can see the, the more recent end of the trend, the same trend has been going on in Scotland. And that the most recent data for 2010 that we have for this question is essentially virtually identical to that of the UK as a whole. So we can, I think, reasonably infer that Scotland has been on exactly the same journey as has the UK as a whole in terms of its attitudes towards same-sex relationships. Now, given we have seen a dramatic change in attitudes, you therefore will not be surprised to hear that attitudes are actually related to age. So this is now taking the 2010 Scottish Social Attitude Survey, so the most recent Scottish reading, and I'm simply showing you now the difference between the percentage of people who say that there's nothing wrong with same-sex relationships at all, minus those people who say um, that it is wrong. So if you've got a positive measure, if the bars are going upwards, that means that more people are saying there's nothing wrong with same-sex relationships than saying there is something wrong. If the, uh, the column is pointing down, it means that those who disapprove are in the majority. And as you will see, as, uh, the, well, I mean, two points. First of all, there is a gradual relationship with age. The younger you are, the more likely it is to be the case that you say, what's the issue? Um, you will also see there's a very dramatic break, as I now increasingly say, as I get older, amongst those people who are slightly older than I am. Um, essentially, 65 plus is now very much the concentration of the area where people are disapproving which, of course, is essentially that group of people who were brought up at a time when same-sex um, relationships, were actually, uh, for men at least, were uh, actually uh, criminal um, in England and Wales, and decriminalisation was rather later in Scotland. Um, so, in part, therefore, undoubtedly, almost what's going on is what we call the process of generational replacement. I'm afraid the people who are 65-plus are more likely to die earlier than the other parts of the population, and if we assume that subsequent young people are similar in their attitudes to those who are currently young people, then probably the liberal trend that we have seen will continue, subject, of course, to events, because the lesson of the, of the AIDS epidemic in the early 1980s is that there's nothing ever about this, and attitudes can sometimes change in the other direction. Unsurprisingly, therefore, um, given the change in attitudes towards same-sex relationships in general, Attitudes towards same-sex or gay or equal marriage, depending on your preference of language, has also changed. And again, changed pretty dramatically, actually, in, in, in recent years. This is from Scottish Social Attitudes. It's a, an item which we've asked on three occasions, which is simply said to people, uh, gay or lesbian uh, people should have the right to marry. Do you agree or disagree? Now, in this question, we don't get into the issue of whether they should be allowed to marry, should it only be civil partnership, etc. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of data about that uh, later on. But what you will note is that even in the eight-year period from 2002 to 2010, which crosses the period when uh, civil partnerships were introduced, the proportion of people who agreed with that proposition increased from 41% to 61%. Um, so we therefore, in the relatively recent past in Scotland, have seen quite a substantial change. And if you don't believe Scottish social attitudes... You can take the data from Ipsos Mori. This was done for the Equality Network, who, of course, are in, who were in, uh, campaigning for equal marriage. Very, very similar question. Same-sex couples have the right to get married. This was done in 2012. Um, and again, as you can see, now getting to a situation where it's almost three to one um, in favour of uh, the proposition. Okay. Um, 
However, of course, you, won't be, you don't need me to tell you that the section of both in the debate in England and Wales and the debate here north of the border about same-sex uh, marriage, the, the most intense opposition came essentially from those who are in some way or another uh, adherents to a religion. Um, so uh, let's learn a little bit about how attitudes vary according to people's religious um, uh, identity. Um, what I'm showing you here is, so this is data again from Scotland. Uh, the left-hand column shows you attitudes amongst those people who when we say, look, you know, to which religion, if any, do you think you belong? Um, amongst those who, have no, who do not claim any religious affiliation at all, 72% of people agreed that gay and lesbian couples should have the right to marry. Then you will see the views of those people who claim adherence. Now, this is not necessarily people who are regularly practicing, but claimed adherence um, quite clearly were less likely to be in favor of same-sex marriage, but actually um, adherents of certainly the two largest churches in Scotland, the Church of Scotland and the Roman Catholic Church, in both cases there was around a half of claimed adherents who agreed with the proposition on the Scottish Social Attitude Survey. Um, you may now be wondering where the Episcopalians are, and I'm going to elaborate on this in a moment. You are in that group there that says other Protestants, and you may be saying, oh, so apparently we're amongst the least in favour. Well, of course, you're in with the wee freeze. <laughs> and actually, I, I'm, one of the things that's undoubtedly true about this debate, which I think the public image was always wrong, as you can see, it, was, it is not the case that Roman Catholic adherents are particularly opposed to same-sex marriage, as can, at least uh, no more so than those who are adherents to any other uh, denomination in Scotland. Um, actually, it's, if you really want to look at it, it's actually people who are members, Presbyterians, other than the Church of Scotland, was the, was the group amongst whom um, opposition is, uh, is, is greatest. Now, you may be wondering about the Episcopalians. Now, I'm afraid the problem with Episcopalians, so far as researchers in Scotland is concerned, is there aren't very many of you. You probably don't need to tell you that. All right? And in any one year, there are only about 30 to 40 Episcopalians who are interviewed by Scottish Social Attitudes. So what I've done, to at least to get something that's kind of vaguely statistically robust, is to pull together the three readings that we have for 2002, 2006, and 2010, and just give you some idea of how Episcopalians compare with the Scottish population in general. And actually, you don't differ very much. Um, so on average, in the three surveys, 45% of Episcopalian adherents, these are people who claim to be Episcopalians, Church of England, Church of Wales, whatever, 45% agreed with the proposition, 26% disagreed, which means you are only slightly, were slightly less likely to be in favour than the average across all three of those surveys. And of course, that was at levels that changed a lot during that time. Um, across Scotland's whole. So again, I think probably you have to re re realise amongst ad claimed adherents at least, probably there are a majority, or at least, well, certainly half are, are in favour of gay marriage and almost undoubtedly you have, as a, as a community, uh, uh, witnessed a quite substantial social change along with the rest of Scotland. In order to be able to get at really where is the um, source of opposition, to same-sex marriage amongst religious uh, community, you actually have to look at regularity of attendance. Now, at this point, I just cannot tell you how many, what other views of regularly attending Episcopalians because they're virtually all of you in this room um, and therefore you know, uh, I can't get you in surveys. So this is actually, this is, this is anybody who attends any kind of regular religious service irrespective of religion or denomination. Um, and you can see that Th those who attend a service once a fortnight, this is where the, the uh, group views which are least favourable to same-sex marriage. And in fact, um, even in 2010, we, there were still slightly more people across all religions and denominations who uh, were opposed to it than were in favour. Though that said, I think I would also say actually the religious community was almost divided straight down the middle, even amongst regular adherents. But then what you will also note is that as soon as you go from regular at attenders to occasional attenders, the world already looks very different. And the occasional attenders of any religion or denomination are typically almost as liberal on this subject 
as is the population in general. Um, the other thing to realize then, however, is that actually, although those views, are, the, the, the views of people who are regular attenders have changed, they, are actually, they now actually stand out much more. Now, let, me, let me walk you through this, through this graph. So what I'm, I'm, to, to show this, I'm showing you British social attitudes, and I'm using same-sex relationship, attitudes to same-sex relations in general, rather than gay marriage in particular. But this is just to give you some idea of how the social process has evolved. So back in 1983... 75% of people who regularly attended any kind of religious service across Britain as a whole felt that same-sex relationships were always or mostly wrong, and only 9% said, what's the issue? Most recent reading in 2012, that 75% figure has fallen to 60%. So it's still the case that those who are regular attenders of a religious uh, ceremony um, are still inclined to be censorious about same-sex relationships in general. But that said, their views have actually become more liberal than they once were. So you can even here, you can see that the social change is making a difference. The second thing I want you then to note, however, is that back in 1983, the views of those who are regular religious attenders were not that different from the rest of the population. So 75% of people who were regular attenders said the same-sex relations were always or mostly wrong. 59% of people who never attended a religious ceremony of any kind, other than you know, weddings and funerals, um, were also of the same view. So there was a gap. The gap was around 16 points. Now what you will see is that although attitudes amongst those who are regular religious attenders are somewhat more liberal... The gap now is a gap between 60% who are saying that these relationships are still mostly wrong amongst those who are regular religious attenders and only 22% amongst those who do not attend at all. So to that extent, at least, you know, one of the reasons almost undoubtedly why uh, the religious communities found themselves isolated is that in truth they are now relatively isolated in their views on this subject, albeit at the same time also now somewhat divided. And just to give you again some idea why at the end of the day legislators were not necessarily going to take too much notice of what the religious communities said. This is the, this, this is the level, of, level, of reg, level of regular religious attendance in Scotland. Uh, Scotland has now, during the last decade, has seen a non-trivial decline in regular religious attendance. It's gone down from 20% of people attending regularly down to 13 the result of which actually, by the way, now is that Scotland is now no more religious a country than is England and Wales. Again, another reason why attitudes in the two parts of the UK are now so similar to each other. Uh, basically, one in, is that we're now in a position where one in eight of people um, uh, attend regularly. That's quite been the position in England and Wales for quite a while. Scotland has now fallen in line. Um, in contrast, 71% of people never attend a religious ceremony. So you can see at the end of the day, if you're a politician and you're working out where does public opinion lie, you can see why at the end of the day, despite the intense lobbying, the position of the religious communities were relatively weak. Um, now, what about the debate? We've, no, we've had quite substantial debate in uh, recent uh, years as a result of legislative activity. What impact, if any, has the short-run debate had? Um, the short answer is not very much at all. Um, this is um, British data. This is data collected during the um, quite speedy passage of the legislation through the House of Commons, because basically David Cameron, having decided to do it, as it were, to quote Shakespeare, if twere done, twere twere the best done quickly, otherwise might go my, because my backbenchers are not too happy about it. So we have that six-month period at the beginning of 2013 when the legislation goes through, and in that six-month period, despite the intensity of the debate, basically attitudes did not change. All right. So insofar as the religious community was attempting to try to mobilise public opinion in opposition to same-sex marriage, I'm afraid the, answer, the, the, the message is that that uh, lobbying failed so far as public opinion is concerned. And asked to choose dichotomously between supporting or opposing changing the law, it's not an overwhelming majority. Again, it's arguably only just over half of people who are in favour of it, but clearly, on the other hand, it was a majority, and it was a majority that proved to be robust. Um, as it happens, quite recently, back in November, as the Scottish Government, the Scottish Parliament, was finally dealing with the legislation, um, YouGov asked exactly the same question in a Scottish survey, 
And again, just to reinforce the point how basically Scotland and the rest of the UK are the same. Same question, same polling company, same method. Last reading uh, towards the end of the debate in England and Wales, 54% in favour, 37% opposed. Now, equally in Scotland, November 2013, towards the end of the debate here, 56% in favour, 35% opposed. So again, a very, very similar picture. Now, all of this said, all of this said that, as it were, it looks as though a majority, albeit not an overwhelming majority, of the general population are now in favour. It has to be said, and absolutely, that exactly the answer you get to these questions about same-sex marriage does depend, as survey researchers like myself always know, it depends on how you ask the question. Um, so let me just give you a little bit of insight into that um, with three examples. The first is... Um, can I have the next slide, please? Sorry. Um, this is a question that was asked by Angus Reid across the UK as a whole, and where rather than just giving people the dichotomous choice, everything I've shown you so far has essentially said, are you in favour of equal marriage or not? And you could argue, hang on, that misses out an important part of the debate because there is a third way, which is simply to retain the civil partnerships that we have at the moment. And Angus Reid, on three occasions during uh, the debate um, from 2012 and 2013, did ask people to choose between those three options. Um, doing that still got a plurality of people in favour of going for equal marriage rather than just civil partnerships. But equally, however, we are then in a position where the proportion who's saying they're in favour is somewhat less than 50%. That said, however, what I think you also need to understand is that although there may be a, around a third of the UK population and by inference also the Scottish population who were happy to retain the status quo of civil partnerships, do, you should not read from that that they were, were, therefore were necessarily opposed to the idea of equal marriage because what Angus Reid did with the third of those polls in January 2013 was then to ask a follow-up question, which is, well, are you for or against introducing uh, same-sex marriage? And once they did that, the proportion in favour went up to 52%, the proportion opposed 38%. In other words, some of the people who were saying civil partnerships is fine were saying, well, that's okay, but if you push me, I'll, I'll, I'll accept equal marriage. The second thing I, I should show you is some of the polling that was done by, the, uh, by behalf of the coalition stroke Scotland for Marriage, who were campaigning against equal marriage, um, in which they, on both in the UK and in Scotland, and again we got the same answer on both sides of the border, um, gave people the proposition marriage should continue to be a lifelong exclusive commitment between a man and a woman, um, uh, and asked people whether they agreed or disagreed, and we then get a point where percentage of the majority of people said they agreed, from which the coalition at least wished to draw the inference that therefore this meant that marriage should be exclusively between a man and a woman. I will simply say as a survey researcher that statement is rather ambiguous. It certainly suggests arguably a commitment that indeed if somebody is married to somebody else it should be an exclusive sexual relationship and that ideally it should be a lifelong one. But whether it necessarily means that it should only be a relationship between man and woman shall we say the interpretation of that is in the eye of the beholder, but I would not necessarily presume that all respondents to that survey necessarily took that inference. Um, the third thing I want to show you, which um, is, again, this is the only survey I know which gets at the issue which I know exercised a lot of people in religious communities, which is will the opt-out for religious communities hold fast and should it be allowed, etc., etc.? Um, and this is a survey that Mori did, um, I think it's going back to 2012, in which they, they included this option. So what you've now got on the blue line, are the, the blue section of the pie graph, are the percentage of people who said, yes, the, you should introduce equal marriage, and by the way, the religious community should not be allowed to opt out. The red lot, which is the largest group, are the people who say, yeah, we should introduce equal marriage, and, yeah, but if the religious communities don't want to do it, that's fine, that's up to them. Um, then there were the green folk with the folk who said civil partnerships only, and then the people who said no recognition at all are the purple group. I'm sorry, I've lost the no at some point. Now, 
Uh, what, I think the thing to note from this is that certainly it seems as though at the moment the majority of the population are happy for religious communities not to opt in if they don't want to. The second thing we have to read from this is that once you introduce the possibility that actually marriage may, may, may only mean civil marriage and not religious marriage, then the proportion of people in favour of um, equal marriage then goes up even further. Because at this point we've got what, certain, around three quarters of the population across the UK saying it's fine. So almost undoubtedly quite a few of those people who said stick at civil partnerships were probably also expressing the view that we shouldn't require religious uh, communities to um, uh, get involved in if they don't want to. Uh, finally, just to show you, um, as it were, where we are now, um, this was actually asked, uh, believe it or not, for the Daily Mail. I don't think the Daily Mail gave it much publicity for reasons that become obvious. Um, but uh, it's one of the, the, the most recent survey, which is mostly about independence. Um, so this was re just shortly after the Scottish legislation was passed, and this is giving the exact wording up where the Scottish Parliament we've recently approved a bill that will legalise same-sex marriage. Do you agree or disagree with this move? 49% agreed, 25% disagreed. Again, very, very similar to what we're getting to all the kind of dichotomous readings we've seen earlier. So, where do I think that leaves us? Oops, sorry, I've now gone one too far. Here we go, right. Um, the truth is, we have witnessed a very substantial, I would regard it as a cultural revolution, effectively, so far as attitudes towards same-sex relationships are concerned. This has been a social change which has been less marked amongst those who are uh, uh, active members, at least of religious communities, though not necessarily amongst the less active members of religious communities. And it has, in truth, left religious organisations looking rather isolated on this issue. Now, you may find that's fine. You may feel that's fine. We should be isolated because we are right. But equally, you need to be aware, insofar as you are a, a, a church that's trying to serve a wider society, that you are indeed pretty isolated on this issue. There is now seemingly a majority, both in Scotland and across Britain as a whole, in favour of equal marriage, certainly when posed as a dichotomous choice. I don't think it's an overwhelming majority, it's only just over half or so, but you could only about a quarter or so actively disagree. Um, but it is probably, unless something dramatic happens, it's probably an attitude that is going to become more popular over time rather than less popular as the process of generational change goes on. And you certainly should be aware that the um, views of those who at least claim adherence to this church are not that different from that of Scotland as a whole, and that probably nominal Episcopalians at least, around a half of them, my best guess is, are in favour, and you know, only around a quarter to a third are against. I'm happy to take questions on kind of technicalities or what were you trying to say type questions before we go into... Um, you thank you very much indeed, John. Um, thank you. That was absolutely fascinating. <laughs>